Hi there, my name is Meg and I am the new BinRx Outreach Program Coordinator. I'm here in the BinRx Space Program at Curtin University. So today I am recording this video to take you through some of the updates and changes and tweaks we have made to the Bintro to electronics boxes that Rocky developed as well as the videos that are online. Um, so you'll notice some different things if you've got one, if you've recently gotten a box from us or if you've ordered it on um, the link on the website. We've made some changes and uh, we'll go over those basically to the microcontroller, to the size of the paper craft CubeSat, um, to the size of the breadboard, um, and that's about it. So I'll just quickly grab those. So in the videos, the paper craft CubeSat is printed on an A4 piece of paper that way around. Our new ones we've done on A3. So you will need access to a slightly larger printer and print that double-sided. Um, and you'll see in a minute why we did this and, uh, and hopefully it's something that's still going to be useful to you. So just hold on and we'll switch. So if you've been watching the videos on the Bintroduction to Electronics website, um, you will notice this, which is the AtTiny85 microcontroller, as well as the SparkFun AVR programmer. So because of needing a few extra pins as we progress through the activities, as well as some issues getting the drivers onto um, particularly WA high school uh, computers for students, we've swapped this for this. So this done doesn't need an extra board that can just go, you'll need, and these aren't in your box, a USB micro to A cable. And so effectively this is changed to this. So if we pop that back on there, I won't bother. So the Arduino microcontrollers uh, work natively without any special drivers. Uh, if you install the Arduino IDE software, which is what you would have had to do going through the original videos anyway. So this has more pins, um, but, that, uh, but it has different pin assignments as well. So when you get to the activities with the coding, if you have a look, you'll see that there's pin numbers printed directly on the board. Those are the pin numbers you'll use when you're doing your code. Uh, it's a little bit trial and error. Um, the different pins have different modes and different abilities to do different things. Um, so, but if you follow the code that we've put on the website for the Arduino micros, um, then you'll be able to get that working. Uh, but if you do want to give it a try yourself before looking at our solved code, you can try and see if you can solve the code switching from the Arduino, or sorry, from the at tiny 85s to the Arduino micros. Uh, but it, it can be, I think for activity two, it's pretty straightforward, but activity three onwards uh, with the pin change interrupt routines, it does get a little bit more involved. Uh, but we have had, you know, sort of year 11 and 12 students really get stuck into it and solve it. But it does take a lot of time. So depending on, um, you know, where you want to go with it, you can either follow our code or you can um, try and solve it yourself. So the other thing that you'll see in your box is that you will have received an Arduino with the header pins. These are header pins. They allow these to be pushed into a breadboard. Um, I'll grab my breadboard. So here's a breadboard here. So these pins are what allow the microcontroller to be pushed in. And again, you wanna be gentle <laughs> and do it and not wreck your, wreck your micro, but that goes in like that. Uh, but we do have a link to some soldering practice. And if you have a look in your boxes that you will have received recently, you'll actually have these Arduino micros with no header pins and a separate pack with the header pins inside. Actually, I'll grab a fresh one. There you are, there are 20 pins on them, but we've only got 17 pins that we need to actually um, use. So what we wanna do is cut those down. So make sure you are wearing your safety glasses when you're doing this. Grab your wire snips, grab your safety glasses, put those on, I have mine on. Uh, and then this is 20, so we need to get rid of one, two, three. You just go in there. And it can go flying, so just go gently. You can just give it a little snap. And then we've got 17 pins left, three that we don't need. And you'll see those line up. You don't need to do the two end ones. Those, I'm not sure what those are for, but there we are. And so you'll go and you'll solder the tops of those. Uh, you watch the, uh, I'll put in the comments uh, a link to uh, some GitHub resources we've got that has got a PowerPoint presentation on soldering best practices for safety, as well as good solders. And there's a video lecture with um, Athena there as well, who is one of our, one of our expert solderers. Um, so that's it. You will also need, and that may not have been provided in your box, are your nine volt batteries to power your payload uh, prototypes. 
um, as well as those USB cables. So if you're stuck with any of this, just give us a call or sorry, give us an email on finrx at curtain.edu.au and we'll be happy to help out. So you'll see in the videos, we've got Rocky's original mini breadboard with the at tiny 85s. Now the new paper craft that you can download from the website accommodates, still fits in the larger CubeSat paper craft, but you've got more spots and then you've also got enough room for the Arduino micros. So hopefully you will have fun playing with that and, um, and you can get the, the rewritten code uh, to help solve the change from the at tiny 85 to the Arduino micro. But other than that, everything is more or less the same and uh, yeah, good luck.